there's a lot of politicians that are calling for peace in the Middle East, but it doesn't seem like anyone is calling for peace here in Canada. This carbon tax exemption that Justin Trudeau imposed on the east coast of Canada, who'd be to buy the guy for Atlantic Canadians, and apparently now it's all Canadians, but only if you're using home heating for oil as the primary source, then you're exempt from the carbon tax for the next three years. And this is just basically had a huge uproar and um, trickle wave effect where now premiers from every single province and territory are standing up and saying, yeah, no, this is discrimination. And if you're going to exempt anybody, it's going to be all Canadians, not some Canadians. Welcome back to another video, everybody. We're going to be taking a look at Danielle Smith, who may actually end up suing Justin Trudeau over this div divisive and controversial issue but before we get into it i want to encourage you guys to give a like and subscribe if you haven't yet already really helps grow the channel as well as i'm super excited to announce a new sticker that i am coming out with are you ready the link is down in the description and the pinned comment below here it is justin trudeau on a milk carton saying have you seen me the link for that ladies and gentlemen is down in the description below and the pinned comment that's probably going to be my absolute favorite one um yeah so without further ado let's get into this video of danielle smith being interviewed and explaining why she may actually sue justin trudeau over this carbon tax here we go Continuing our coverage tonight of some of the reaction to Ottawa's new carbon tax carve-outs and Rural Economic Development Minister Go Go Goody, pardon me, Hutchings' comments to CTV that if the rest of the country wants to secure similar carve-outs, they could elect more Liberals. Danielle Smith is Alberta's Premier. Have a listen to our conversation. Hi, Premier Smith. Good to welcome you back to our program. Thanks for making the time. You bet. My pleasure. I wanted to start off and just ask you, uh, Premier Mo is responding to these changes with the federal, uh, the federal carbon tax program by saying that if Saskatchewan and natural gas doesn't get the same carve out, he's going to order Sask Energy by January 1st to stop collecting the tax. I think the market works a bit differently in Alberta, but are you entertaining some sort of similar position? Well, that's the advantage Saskatchewan has of having a crown corporation, is that they can do that kind of action. Whereas in Alberta, we've got a private market with private industry players. I, uh, you know, I, I commend Premier Mo on taking a, a, an action like that. He acknowledges that it's probably not uh, not legal from a from a, a, a from that standpoint. But I wouldn't ask our industry here to take any actions that would be illegal that would cause the federal government to punish them. I think that this requires a political solution. And the political solution is clearly to let the federal government um, acknowledge that they have made a mistake here, that they need to be yeah. providing the fuel tax Accountability. To, on all home heating, all types of fuel in all parts of the country. They shouldn't be pitting one region against another and shouldn't be saying that, that one Canadian is, is more harmed by this tax than another. If it's a harmful tax in winter in Atlantic Canada, it's a harmful tax in winter in Alberta. And he should acknowledge that and take the tax off. Have you had any private conversations with the Prime Minister, for example, or pursued that kind of angle rather than, uh, you know, publicly lambasting them in order to secure that, that type of carve out for Canadians in your province? You know, we, we have been calling for an end to the carbon tax ever since I got elected. We, we knew what kind of pain it was causing in our province, especially when we get into the, the depths of winter and it's minus 30 and people have to turn their furnaces on. We now have a carbon tax that I think is almost equivalent to the cost of, of natural gas and it's only going to go up. So uh, we've been calling for an end to the retail carbon tax. We think that we can reduce carbon emissions a different way by working with our big industrial players, by having technological change, by bringing on different sources of, of heating and different sources of power. But to be punishing uh, residents who, who don't really have any choice other than to use natural gas. That's just not fair. It's its causing harm and now it's dividing the country. He's got to stop doing this and just take the tax off completely on, on home heating for this winter. I certainly understand the point that you're making publicly here. I guess my question is whether or not since, for example, the announcement last Thursday, you've pursued a private conversation with the Prime Minister in order to try and secure this for Albertans as opposed to what might be more politically expedient, which is calling him out publicly. So I want to interject here because I feel as though a lot of people try this and this is the game of politics. Politics isn't necessarily about the deals that you're making behind closed doors and what 
you know, who, who behind closed doors views you in a certain light. It's how the general public views you. And Justin Trudeau has proven over the past eight years or his entire political career that he doesn't care about other people. He's willing to step over other people. And it's about time people are willing to do the same to him and step over him and, you know, out alpha him like Danielle Smith has done in previous interviews or just kind of be more of an attack dog. Pierre Paul Poliev is very well known as the federal conservative politician who, you know, is the main attack dog for at the federal level. And Danielle Smith has obviously made a massive name for herself for attacking Justin Trudeau, uh, even at a provincial level. And so I don't blame Danielle Smith for wanting to make this public right away. I wouldn't be surprised if they did try to talk about this behind closed doors and Justin Trudeau likely shot it down right away. So what are you supposed to do in that position? Like, let me ask you, if you're Danielle Smith and every time that you try to have a private discussion with somebody, they just keep saying, no, 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 we're not doing it, we're not doing it. Then at some point you have to take public. That's politics, ladies and gentlemen. That's literally their job is to sway public opinion. Like that, that's the freaking job, man. Come on, that's that's a very bizarre question that this um, uh, you know news anchor is asking. This is just such a weird, wacko question. Well, you know, it's it's not like the prime minister is very easy to get on the phone with. I've talked to him a handful of times in the time that I've been I, I've been premier. And we do have a table where my ministers are meeting with his ministers, our deputy ministers are meeting with his deputy ministers. And so I, I, I think he's the one who made the blunder. He's the one who went out in public and announced this ludicrous policy and began the process of unraveling the carbon tax because the whole basis for him to argue at the Supreme Court that he should have the, the right to be able to set this federally was so that the same tax applied in the, in the province in the same way and that everybody would, would, would be treated fairly. So he's the one who's breaking the rules on this. And, and so I would say he has to be called to account for it. And he's got to fix it. And the easiest way to fix it right now is to take the, the fuel tax off of all forms of home heating. Outside, though, of the uh, home heating oil, there are other parts of this carve-out, which includes a doubling of the rebate for rural Canada, for rural Canadians, which would include portions of Alberta. Uh, Goody Hutchings, the Minister for Rural Economic Development, today wrote in response to some of the backlash she got for, for the other comment she made that a rising tide lifts all boats. The doubled rural top-up and temporary pause of the fuel charge on home heating oil apply anywhere the federal program is in place. The heat pump incentive will be available anywhere we have an agreement with provinces or territories or when we do. Is that not true? I mean, there are rural Canadians in Alberta who will benefit from what the government announced. As I understand it, you can't get insurance on a heat pump system in anywhere that goes below minus 20 degrees Celsius. You have to have a backup. We are routinely below 20 degrees Celsius in our province in winter. Heat pumps are Yeah, for at least six months out of the year. What he has to acknowledge is that he went too far, too fast with a, a, a punitive tax that no one could afford. And this is an affordability crisis. And that's the real issue here. That's why we have called for an end to the carbon tax as we're dealing with an inflation crisis. And he accepted that for one part of the country. He needs to now accept that every part of the country is feeling the same pain and take the same action. Some federal See, Justin Trudeau messed up when he said the reason why he was cutting um, the Atlantic Canadians or all Canadians or whatever the hell he wants to say for home heating with oil. He said it's because it is one of the more expensive ways um, to heat your home. Well, home heating across Canada right now, everywhere is very expensive. So he literally admitted that there's an affordability crisis in Canada within that statement and then said in order to relieve stress to a small portion of Canadians, uh, that's why they're choosing to pause it. It's insane. Not because that there's you know a, a risk or like a default or a defect of uh, he, you know heat pumps or, or whatever reason he wanted to come up with. Um, it was because of an affordability crisis. So Trudeau really messed up by saying that because he acknowledged, hey, yeah, there is a real problem, and I'm gonna help you, and I'm actually gonna help people, but only three percent of Canadians, and that's why everyone's having a, a massive um, put up a big stink about this. The liberals I spoke with today were pushing back against the criticism that you and, for example, Premier Mo were levying, in particular in your case, saying that basically 
you're accusing the prime minister of impeding on uh, or infringing on national unity, but at the same time, you're floating the idea, for example, of leaving the Canada pension plan, and they called it ironic that you'd be kind of crusading against him for doing the same thing. Well, they're two different things. Uh, we went to court because we didn't think that they had the authority to have a carbon tax. The, the Supreme Court sided with the federal government on the basis that they were going to be applying this fairly, and they felt that every single Canadian had to pay it. And now the federal government are, are, are breaking their own rules. And so I think that that actually might require us to go back to the Supreme Court, since they're not living up to what it is that they told the court they intended to do. They're making exceptions, they're not applying it fairly. That's what, what, what Canadians are concerned about. And I think that he's uh, invited this criticism. He can fix it really quickly by, by treating every region of the province fairly and either keeping the fuel tax on in Atlantic Canada, although I doubt he'll want to do that, better, the better solution would be to, to eliminate it everywhere. So the rule... Not that I'm trying to give liberals any sort of advice on how to, you know, win in the polls and stuff, but if they really wanted to bring their 1% likelihood of winning the next election, and that's what the polls are saying right now, up to maybe 2, 3, 4, or even potentially 5%, which seems extremely unlikely even at this point, the only way to do that is to acknowledge the fact that there is a... Uh, a financial crisis here in Canada. And he's done that. He's done that right now. He just did that with, uh, you know, this new law of uh, pausing the carbon tax for specific people. But he would actually win a lot of public opinion over uh, if he, you know, uh, removed the carbon tax for everybody's home heating. And it's a double-edged sword because I want him to do that, of course. You know, my home heating is going to be crazy expensive uh, this winter, and I'm sure yours is as well. And a lot of people are really pushing the, the needle as far back as they possibly can to actually turn on their home heating because it's going to be, the carbon tax is going to add hundreds, maybe even thousands of additional dollars. And so we all want that to obviously be relieved as, as much as possible. But then again, if he does that, it's going to, you know, People are going to be like, yay, Trudeau did something, yay. How about we start looking at all the other things, if any, that Justin Trudeau did to positively uh, have an effect on Canadians. So it's a weird double-edged sword right now, and maybe that's part of his strategy, but I don't think it's a winning strategy. I think this is sadistic, and he's pissed so many people off, and people are not going to forget i mean the news cycle will you know regurgitate other things and, and it'll get suppressed down and you know right now it's carbon tax next week india is is pissed off with justin trudeau again or justin trudeau did this or justin trudeau did that so the carbon tax might not be the epicenter of uh, our attention until the next election but it will be something that people can uh, go back to and especially when it comes time to the political campaigns uh, that's something that um, that will definitely be weaponized against Justin Trudeau. Well, rebate, though, is not just particular to Atlantic Canada. Do you really think if you went back to the Supreme Court based on a three-year pause, you're going to get a different decision? Well, it's not going to get any easier in winter to heat our homes. We, we when, the, when we were fighting it before the Supreme Court, they hadn't in, acknowledged that they were going to increase it to $170 per ton. We're only halfway there. It's only going to get worse. And so if it's this bad now and this punitive now and this harmful now that they're having to make exceptions, that says to me that the entire program has to be rethought. They've made but a mistake but the and they have to acknowledge that. But the decision, pardon me, Premier, the decision of the Supreme Court was that they had the right to levy a tax based on climate change concerns in the way that they, in the way that they have, in the way that they did. I, I'm, I'm unsure how a pause for example, on one item is necessarily going to change the entire genesis of the decision. It's the unfairness of it all. Like, this is the, the point. The federal government should be applying taxes equally across the country. They shouldn't be yes. picking choosing in areas that choose to elect more liberals than those areas that don't and rewarding them because of some political calculation. That's not how our, our laws are supposed to work, and that's not how the federal power is supposed to work. So they're the ones who I think have undermined their very arguments for the, the carbon tax. First of all, they said that it wasn't punitive, that the rebate was enough, and now clearly they don't believe that's the case because they're having to increase the rebate, and they're also having to provide a special deal to those who are on home heating, so uh, our home heating oil. So I think that the, the entire basis on, on which they built this carbon tax is flawed. And uh, if you start seeing other provinces take matters into their own hands, in Saskatchewan, them saying, well, we're not going to collect it on natural gas, who knows what other provinces are going to do? That, that completely undermines the system. He needs to get ahead of it. He's 
it's a very level-headed approach that Danielle Smith has to this. And I think that her teaming up with Saskatchewan's premier, Scott Moe, and any other premiers uh, across Canada that just basically want to say, look, we understand that the federal government is imposing this carbon tax on home heating, but given Justin Trudeau's discrimination and incompetence, we're just not going to collect that money. That would actually be a really good approach, and that's going to boost the popularity of um, the, the political party of, of whoever premier is in power in said province. And Danielle Smith, she's being, you know, uh, this reporter is not holding back saying, well, it's not going to make a big difference, man. Like it's just a tax and it's for some people, not others. And I think Danielle Smith is handling this interview very well. There's uh, just about a minute left, but I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. Created the problem. He's now got to solve it. Premier, I just have a few seconds left, but I did want to ask you about something your finance minister told me over the weekend. I was asking about any kind of objective data that you will determine whether or not to hold a referendum on when it comes to leaving the CPP. Uh, he didn't have any details for me in that regard, and he said it would be a feeling that your government derives from the consultations it conducts. Can you understand how Albertans might hear that you're going to base that decision on a feeling and be worried? Well, I guess what I've heard is that Albertans want to see a, a solid number, and so do we. So we've asked the federal government, if they don't like our calculation, and they think we've misinterpreted the act, to tell us what they think the number is. We've also asked the CPPIB Investment Board as well to do the same thing. So once we get that number, then we'll have a better idea of whether Albertans want to go to a referendum on the basis of the calls we received to MLA offices, the survey results, the consultations Jim Dinning is doing, polling, all of that will give us a sense of where Albertans are at. It's not one individual source. It's going to be all of that. So we have more consultation to do over the next couple of months. But the most important thing is getting a firm number. And we've asked the federal government for that, and hopefully they'll deliver on it. If you get that number, though, are you going to actually put to Albertans in any sort of capacity prior to the actual referendum a question about whether or not they actually want to pursue this? Because I looked through the survey. That question is never asked. It's just how it's managed, by whom. It's never a question of whether or not it's going to happen. Will that ever be put to them in order to determine whether or not it's worth a referendum? Well, that's what a referendum would be about, is whether or not we would uh, stay with the federal plan or whether there's enough reason to go and create an Alberta pension plan. And I think uh, the Albertans have raised really great points with us. They want to know exactly what the number of the transfer would be. They want to know exactly what would be the impact on premiums and what the increase in benefits would be. I think that's reasonable. And so we've got a little bit more work to do to get those numbers. And then we'll have uh, a better idea once we've put that out to the public of whether they want to have a vote on it. Okay, Premier, I'll leave it there. I'm out of time. I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Man, it, it's just such a breath of fresh air to see somebody in politics uh, be so level-headed and speak such common sense. And it, it feels like, you know, we've really found a gem here. Danielle Smith, the way she talks, presents herself, her policies, her ideas, they seem extremely attractive uh, to a lot of people, not just Albertans, but uh, people across Canada. And I mean, that's how politicians are supposed to be. So Danielle Smith, thank you for being exceptional. And also that is kind of how politicians are supposed to be. So thank you for setting the new standard for what should be the norm. Um, I've said this in the past that uh, I, I've highly considered moving to Alberta myself, moving my family to Alberta. Uh, and uh, it seems like every day we're getting closer and closer to doing that. But maybe, maybe if there's like, you know, 500 chats uh or, or comments down below of hey mr and mrs sunshine why don't you guys move to alberta alberta's great my wife watches the videos and uh you know maybe she'll see some motivation i don't know if she watches till the end hi honey if you do anyways that's where we're going to end today's video thank you so much for watching i also want to remind you that if you do want to pick up your milk carton of trudeau have you seen me the link for that is down in the description and the pinned comment below thanks for watching everybody i will see you all in the next one Bye for now. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. If you want to support the channel financially, you can do so by checking out the merch shop linked right up there. Or if you want to do something for free, which is also absolutely acceptable and highly encouraged, you can subscribe right there. If you want to continue watching videos like this, you can do so by clicking or tapping right there to watch the next upcoming video. And if you want to watch a little bit of different content, but also Canadian stuff, you can do so by clicking right up there. That's my second channel, House of Canada, also known as the House of Commons highlights. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.